Hello everyone, GM, GM. Welcome to the Slot of Change Log. I'm Nick from the Slot of Foundation DevRel team, and today I've got Jonas with me. How you doing, Jonas? GM, GM. I'm doing great. Very excited for this one's Change Log. Yeah, there's some really good stuff in here. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the SIMD for this week. Um, we've got SIMD 187, uh, stricter ELF headers. It's actually labeled 187, but I think it should be 189. Uh, you can see my, my note there on the PR, so we'll probably get the title updated. But either way, this is a uh, kind of an interesting SIMD. Basically, Alexander from Anza is proposing that we sort of just uh, restrict the ELF headers. And one of the interesting side effects that happens here sort of intentionally is that uh, it can make programs a little bit more efficient, from my understanding. But it also adds some additional security benefits because if you just sort of ignore some of the other header information, uh, the runtime doesn't need to process it. So it's just a little bit more... Uh, reduces the attack surface, which is nice. Yeah, maybe very, very quickly uh, what an L file even is. So there's the L file is what, like, when you compile your program, you get an L file. And then you can put additional stuff in this L file. Like, for example, the security TXT is written directly <laughs> in this L file. And then uh, on certain headers, uh, places in the L file, you can read data. And there were also some ideas of putting IDLs into the L files, actually, from some other people. And this is now, of course... Probably not possible anymore if this one goes through. This is a nice uh, point for discussion for everyone, I think. Yeah, should be uh, should be interesting to see what people think about this one. And we can move on to Agave version 2.1. Um, it's currently in pre-release status, so pretty soon, officially, version 2.1 is going to be released and uh, officially snapped and tagged so people can start um, investigating what's new in 2.1. Yeah, very excited. Like the new version is coming, 2.1. So that's really cool. And uh, on another note, there is a breaking change in it already between 2.0 and 2.1. Mm -hmm. And it's about the um, Dalek grade. So if you are running into problems um, with this, if you like, um, yeah, get dependency problems there, what you can do is you can either pin version 2.0. Uh, or you go with all versions to 2.1 because that's already fixed again. And mm -hmm. since this is kind of annoying, of course, but this is actually uh, was done to fix a very, very old dependency problem, which was the zero-rise crate dependency. And you can see this is already around since 2022. And uh, supposedly, I think this will be um, fixing this discussion. You can see it's a very long discussion. There were many workarounds around it. So I know they finally put it in the version. But this might be a breaking change if you are upgrading from 2.0 to 2.1. So maybe yeah. if you're just doing 2.1, then uh, you will not have any problems. Probably. Yeah, for you got to make basically make sure that you're using every single crate that you use needs to be either 2.0 and below or 2.1 and above. So you can't mix and match the two, um, the two minor versions. That's basically the, the solution for it. Yeah. And then the next thing, what is this one about? Oh, this is a another fix for Quick. Um, Alessandro has gone through. He's been. We've talked about it a couple of change logs now. Uh, yeah. Alessandro has been working on a bunch of Quick improvements, um, both at the Quinn pack, uh, Quinn crate, which is the Rust implementation for Quick, and uh, sort of just making an, another improvement to Solana's Quick uh, Quick stack, which is awesome. Yeah, and it's really nice. Like, Alessandro is, like, very optimistic. And he says, like, we are going with our Agave client to 1 million TPS. And he's, like, he has yeah, five bucks that he wants to fix. So let's see how this turns out. But um, it's definitely good stuff. And also, like, being pulled back to Quinn so that other people can also use it. I think it's really nice. Um, this is a very short one. Um, just the Bosch. Uh, help us are now extracted from Solana program and moving into their own crate, Solana Borsch. So I think you might need different imports for that, but in general, it's nice because the less you need Solana program, the more often you can leave it out and save space. That's how I understand it, right? Yeah, there's a, I think there's an interesting side effect, and John sort of mentions it here. It makes it now possible to rewrite certain programs without ever depending on the Solana program crate. So you could, uh, in theory, I, I suspect you should be able to switch to something like Pinocchio, which is a zero dependency version of Solana program. I think it's a little bit more efficient as well, a little bit more optimized. 
Um, so this is just one step further to that. So I don't know, maybe Anza is going to rewrite some of these programs. Yeah, Pinocchio is actually really nice. It has a different entry point, which doesn't really? allocate, uh, I think, doesn't allocate any memory and in the entry point itself and saves a lot of CU. So if you have any problems there, you can try the new entry point. Yeah. And I think Solandi also made a video about it. He so did. You can, this was a good one. Yeah, yeah. I, I love his videos. And this is, uh, this is a good one. And the next thing, oh, this is an important one. Very important. Um, so, so the new version of Web3 JS, it's it's basically officially here. It's been a release candidate for a, uh, a release candidate status for a while now, and version 2.0 is going to become uh, official very very soon. So if you're not already looking at Web3 JS version 2.0 and seeing how to do the migration from version one to version two, got to start looking at it now. Figure out the the differences and and how to implement the various changes required within any of your applications. Yeah, and this is maybe coming soon already. Maybe it will come a bit later. Um, so if you're a content creator and you want to create some content around yes. it, I think now is a very good time doing this because uh, it is quite different. Um, there are some things that are like working a bit differently, so people might get confused. And it will be good if you have more examples on it and just more people using it and giving feedback as well. Since so it has been a release candidate for a long time, but there might still be bugs in it. Yeah, and related to it, actually, Anza has put together a sort of reference wallet adapter using Web3.js. Um, it's also in the Web3.js repo under the examples directory. Um, so you can see there's a, a full React app example, how to use the new wallet adapter with the new Web3.js. Yeah, so definitely everyone try it out. Um, now is the best time to start because eventually it will come. And it's also... It's way faster. It's super small. Like you only basically import the stuff that you actually need, which is really nice. <laughs> and there's a new anchor version coming. Um, Soon, TM. 0.31. Uh, yeah, do we know when this is coming, actually? I don't, uh, but there's a whole bunch of changes that are already sort of being filled into the release notes for version 0.31. So uh, already everything that's listed here in the current release notes for it, it's a, it's a draft PR. Or I think it's an open status um, but it sort of details a bunch of the really cool, amazing changes that are coming in 0 0.31. Yeah, there's cool stuff in it. Like there's an IDL builder. Um, there is an um, upgrade to Solana version 2.0 as well. Then we have a uh, no IDL tag for flag. There's lots of um, convenience features that right. you can now build with a certain feature as well. Um, we have some new language features and a lazy account. Then we have uh, unnamed init account structs and some new um, token 22 functions as well that some people were actually missing before. So there's lots of cool stuff in it. Um, yeah, give it a try. Um, it will come soon. You can already build it from a branch if you want, which we're going to give it yeah, a try. Yeah, sure. All right. To wrap up the change log, Stack Exchange. Yeah, we have uh, Jimmy on top again here with uh, 113 points. Then we have John C, Mike, Shalda. Um, Joey, Jacob is here, Hannah, and yeah, there are a bunch of um, uh, unanswered uh, questions last week, but now a bunch of people came in, but now is a good time, like there's lots of people coming in, uh, many people have like questions, so it's a good time to like, let's help our new devs that are coming in, and yeah, help everybody collect some points. One of the other things you can do on Stack Exchange is if you're personally struggling with some random uh, bit of like Solana development, you can post a question and answer your own question at the same time. So as you learn new things or struggle through something, you can post the question and the answer to help other people in the future if they come up to that same issue. Yeah, that's a good idea. Also makes it easier for everyone to find a good idea. Exactly. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week on The Changelog, and we'll catch you next time. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>